2023 World Endurance Championship came to a close this weekend, and it's a season that's kind of tinged with a little bit of sadness because one of the categories in the World Endurance Championship now has to go and live on a farm with all the other categories that were too expensive, too fast, too dangerous or just too outdated to continue racing. Unfortunately GTEs will be no more in the World Endurance Championship, neither will LMP2s, but LMP2 will still be part of the European Le Mans series, Asian Le Mans series and IMSA. The LMP2s will also be on the grid at the 24 hours of Le Mans next year, so it's not gone forever. But from what I see out there, more people seem to be fans of GTEs and are sad to see them go. Now replacing GTE is sadly a necessity. Since Ford, Aston Martin and BMW pulled out, the GTE grids have dwindled and in 2021 there were only four full up factory entries. For the 2023 season, there was no GTE Pro category, just AM, and there were 22 of these on the grid at Le Mans this year, which is a pretty decent turnout. But what is a GTE? Well, a GTE is a GT3 that's kind of roided up a tiny bit. It's a little bit like that gym junkie that walks in, goes straight over to the weights, puts it on maximum, and just starts absolutely giving it some, and just absolutely pounding it, making a lot of noise, and his mate's standing there going, come on, mate, feel the sweat, feel the burn, come on, you got to want it, I just want two more, come on, give it some, mate, come on, come on, mate, two more, you got to want it, you got to earn it! Yeah, but all jokes aside, that's basically what they are, <laughs> roided up GT3s. The category was introduced in 1999 as just GT, in the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the American Le Mans series and the European Le Mans series. But then it got renamed a bit and this is where that whole where is the standardization thing that I've talked about before, and I talked about that before in the GT1 and LMP1 history videos that I've done. This is utterly insane. In the Le Mans series that we just talked about, so Le Mans, the Asian Le Mans, American Le Mans, whatever it is, it was just GT. In the FIA GT Championship, which is now the GT World Challenge, they were NGT. They were GTU in Grand Am and then GTO in the British GT Championship. Then in 2005 it became GT2 to sit below the old GT1s. It's all part of that really confusing era between kind of the end of 1992 and the beginning of 2016 when the categories were all over the place because the FIA needed to replace Group C and replace it with something stable. In 2011, when GT1 died, this GT2 became GTE and became the category we are seeing leave the World Endurance Championship after the final race in Bahrain at the weekend. And the regulations regarding what is eligible and isn't eligible isn't that restrictive, really. The cars must have an aptitude for sport and be two-door, two or four seats and be road legal and available for sale. Minimum builds are 100 for the bigger manufacturers such as Porsche, Ferrari, BMW and Ford and 25 for the smaller manufacturers. It works out to at least one car a week for the big boys and one a month for the little guy. In 2016, things were opened up a tiny bit to allow for a bigger performance gap between the GTEs and GT3s. GTEs in general have a bit more freedom available to them than GTEs, and the main difference between the two is that GTE was supposed to be for more professional teams and the factories, while GT3 was supposed to be for the gentlemen drivers and privateers. Get more OEMs on the grid with GTE was really the goal, and it worked for a time. But like I said, those numbers started to drop. GTE was starting to get quite expensive and in 2021 the ACO said they'd be dropping it and replacing it with another category. The same announcement was done regarding LMP2 earlier this year. But again, like I said, LMP2 will still be allowed onto the grid at Le Mans and 15 slots of the 2024 Le Mans grid will be made available for LMP2s. But for the WEC, it will just be the two categories. Whatever replaces GTE and Hypercar. In the World Endurance Championship, there are grid limits due to the nature of the tracks and pit facilities, and part of the reason for canning LMP2 is that they can open up slots to allow people to enter hypercars because the demand is there, and also allow for more GT cars as the regulations are changing there too. The World Endurance Championship is switching to GT3. I know it's going to get a lot of people rolling their eyes because DTM recently became not another f***ing GT3 series, but the bigger picture is what needs to be looked at here, and the bigger picture is looking pretty good. It means that the WEC and the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, which I'll just call IMSA from now on, will be able to converge. If you play iRacing, then you'll have seen that there are a couple of the prototypes seen at Le Mans this year in the game, the Porsche and the Cadillac, but they also race over in America under IMSA rules, which is what iRacing has as its endurance license, if you want to call it that. Long story short, if any of the teams in IMSA want to race in the World Endurance Championship or just do a one-off at the oldest, most famous, most prestigious and best endurance race of them all, they can. Penske with the Porsches and Cadillac with that epic V-Series thing did. Finally, we seem to have some standardisation, and the same goes with these GT3s. 
IMSA and the ACO slash FIA will probably have their own rules, homologation and balance of performance rules, but it means that the crossover is there. Sauber is doing the aero homologation for hypercar in the WEC by the looks of it. It means that they don't have to build two separate cars for two separate series. Costs have been slashed, in theory. And it also has to be said here that while the IMSA cars came to Le Mans, the hypercars didn't go the other way. Yet, Ferrari is open to doing it. Peugeot's trip to America will be down to Stellantis allowing it since Peugeot's aren't sold over there and even then they would likely rebadge the Peugeot as a Dodge instead and the others like Glickenhaus and Van Wall aren't allowed to race because they don't produce enough road cars per year to get on the grid. BMW and Lamborghini will be on both grids next year according to Autosport and I can't wait to see what Lambo comes up with. I mean I like Lambos, what can I say? And thanks to this crossover, it looks like endurance racing is going to have a modicum of security, which is a good thing. We don't want to have the cost skyrocket and cost control is on everybody's lips at the minute because of the way inflation is going, the economic climate and so on. Because these teams, they're employers as well as competitors. People like to have a moan about Lawrence Stroll buying Force India because it meant that Lance would have a permanent seat. But at the same time, he saved about 600 people from the dole queue. Super Touring got too expensive, Group C got too expensive, LMP1 got too expensive. The list continues. And while I do love LMP2, seeing them go from the WEC will be sad, but at the same time, it's the Orica Cup, so there's no manufacturer battles going on. What you end up having is Hypercar and GTE, but with a spec series in the middle, and that kind of ruins the magic of it all. You should have all those manufacturers battling for the top spot. That's what makes endurance racing cool for me. Lots of cool shapes, all able to compete due to the way the rulebook is. But with LMP2, you had to have an Orica to be competitive. Something about it being easy to set up for less experienced drivers, but I don't know, I've never driven one. But due to the interest in hypercar being so high at a level not seen since Group C, I'll take it. There were 11 LMP2s on the grid at Fuji this year, so getting rid of them and then opening up more slots for hypercars and then, well, maybe about four or five for the GT3s. It's not really going to be that much of a loss. You've still got the same amount of cars on the grid. And you've got loads of really cool shapes as well. And another thing that's great about endurance racing is that this year it had two firsts. The first of those firsts being Lilo Wado, who became the first woman to stand on the top spot of a WEC podium, being part of the AF Corsa team that won the GTE class at Spa. At Monza, the Iron Dames became the first women on pole position for their class. And then at the final round in Bahrain, they won becoming the first all-female team to win in the WEC, this being on top of their win in a GT3 at the 24 Hours of Spa last year. Which I absolutely love, because it finally shows that you don't have to be on the Formula 1 ladder to be considered a success in racing. The Iron Dames were third in GTE at the end of last season, they were second at the end of this season, so who knows where they'll go in the future. It's just a shame that it'll be largely ignored because it's not Formula 1. There's also a lot of really talented women at the minute in rallying, which again, gets ignored. So I really hope that endurance racing enters a new golden era. I've not seen as much manufacturer interest in a category in a very long time, but the success of it all will also depend on who can stop the Toyota monopoly at the minute. While the Ferrari did win at Le Mans with some conspiracy theories running around that it was all BOP just so, so that Toyota would struggle to win and leave it open for Ferrari to win the 100th running of the race, the ability for someone to beat Toyota will help keep the category alive. Because with the amount of money being spent on these projects, if the same people are going to win, the others are going to wonder what the point is in turning up and go elsewhere. But with the new crossover, it means that the likes of Lambo, BMW and so on can just go to IMSA if they want to and come back over for Le Mans such as the beauty of these new regulations. There's a lot to be excited for with the 2024 endurance season, but at the same time there's just as much to be wary of. It's looking like it will be 18 hypercars and 18 GTs for next season, according to DailySportsCar.com, with BMW, Lambo and Alpine adding to the numbers, with Glickenhaus and Van Wall likely dropping out. On the GT3 side, there's rumours of there being R8s with the Lexus RCF, Mercs, the Iron Dame is apparently going to be in a Lambo, Aston's with the new Vantage AMR, McLaren's with United Autosports, Porsche's with Monte, and other neat supercar shapes on the grid as the WEC tends to give first preference to the teams who have been on the grid before. Proton is testing the Mustang currently. There's also rumours of a Bentley. A Continental GT doing 190 down the Mall San? Yes, please. And that's why it looks exciting. All of those brands I've just mentioned potentially being on the grid in the WEC and or IMSA. So Europe's best can go over to America and mix it with them 
and vice versa. The Americans could come here, do Le Mans, do the WEC, and all that good stuff, and sort of create a like a Ryder Cup of motorsport, in a sense. But I'd like to know what you think. Do you like the way it's going, or would you rather have LMP2 or even LMP3 there as well? Not just at Le Mans, but for the whole WEC season. So then, a look at the end of the current WEC season and how it shapes up going into next year. If this thing has made you think things about the thing, then like this thing so the algorithm could do its thing. And for more things like this, subscribe to this thing and get the bell thing on so you never miss out on anything I do around here. Massive thanks as ever to the kind folk at Patreon for the continued support. And if you want to help contribute to the image buying fund for whenever I do need to buy images, there is a link to Patreon in the description along with links to Discord, socials and my affiliate links. Well, there's super thanks under this video for those who just want to do a one and done tip. And there's memberships available too if you consider yourself one of those super fans. So until next time, I've been Aiden Mord. Have a great day wherever you are and goodbye.